Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Hajj, a lifetime experience. In this video, we would like to cover some important steps and points to introduce you to Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam. It's amazing experience and some of its key points, meanings and rulings and introduce you to the rituals of Hajj and the statements of people, their experience and their accounts and whether you are a person who is intending to go to Hajj or Umrah or simply you are a person who would like to know about Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam this video will introduce you to many many great uh, phases and also places uh, and times of Hajj I hope you will enjoy this video. I was very apprehensive to start with. You know, this is a big responsibility. Um, you, you, you study and you learn and you try to get as much information as you can. And I know, at least for myself, I was feeling very apprehensive about coming. I think Allah inviting us women to come to Mecca, Medina and Saudi Arabia uh, just to perform this pilgrimage in spite of the adversities or difficulty, I think I feel very blessed that I've been asked and invited to the house of Allah. Uh, yeah, this is my first Hajj experience. It was, um, it was quite unexpected. Just two or three weeks before uh, Hajj commenced, I decided to go. Um, so Alhamdulillah, I didn't know what to expect at all. Allahumma hawin alayna hadha safa. Allahumma atwi anna bu'da. Allahumma <laughs> لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Hajj is obligatory on every Muslim who has reached the age of puberty and has both the physical, the mental and the financial ability. The Muslim awaits that moment in his or her life to hear from within something that calls him or her to go to Hajj. It is that call which was made by Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, that lands on the heart of the believer and occupies the mind, directing it to focus on answering this invitation and complete this act of worship. وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَلَّا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْئًا 
وطهر بيتي للطائفين والقائمين والركع السجود وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق Behold, we gave the sight to Abraham of the sacred house, saying, Associate not anything in worship with me, and sanctify my house for those who can pass it round, or stand up, or bow, or prostrate themselves therein in prayer, and proclaim the pilgrimage among people. They will come to you on foot, and mounted on every kind of camel, lean on account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways so when we first arrive to make our umrah right before the hajj starts that's that's the most uh, the, the moment that i remember the most because it's the first time i saw the kaaba as a whole and it was the tawaf area was crowded but people are making tawaf so calmly and so silently to see the kaaba for the first time with one's own eyes is at once captivating and overwhelming. The magnificence, the grandeur, the silent hum of millions of people, all here for the same purpose, to worship the Most High, Allah. These are the days of Hajj. In addition to this Abrahamic call, there are countless virtues uh, about performing Hajj, which were mentioned in many occasions and parts of the Quran and the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which appeal to any person who wants to start a new life and a new beginning. Everyone makes mistakes in this life, and everyone wants to get rid of his or her sins in this life, and everyone is looking for that purification and the sense of freedom and liberation from the shackles of the past sins. Hajj offers that opportunity. For instance, we read the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, Man hajja had al bayt, falam yarfuth walam yafsuk, kharaja kayomi waladathu ummu. Whoever performs Hajj to this house, meaning the Kaaba, the Prophet says, and does not commit any obscenity and wrongdoing, you or she will come out as the day he or she was born, pure and free from sins. And he also said, al hajjul mabrur laysa lahu jaza'un illa al jannah A complete and accepted Hajj has no reward for it except Jannah. Ihram is the first pillar of Hajj. It has obligatory actions and also it has forbidden actions and recommended actions and of course makruhat or uh, disliked actions. The obligatory actions of Ihram are al miqat of course it is the station where the pilgrim, whether for Hajj or Umrah, starts his or her uh, ibadah and makes the intention. So that miqat is basically the station where the person starts the hajj or umrah by saying talbiyah. Uh, of course, there are uh, different miqats for the people who are coming from the south. They come, for instance, from Yemen. They go through Yalamlam. Uh, the miqat of those who come from the east, for instance, somebody coming from Emirates or India, cross the miqat of the east. Then they will go through Qarn al Manazil, and the Miqat of the people who are coming from northeast, such as Iraq, they will pass by that Irq. And those who are coming from Medina, for instance, as the Prophet did, they will pass by Dhul Hulayfa, which is known today as Abiyar Ali. And those who are coming from north or from the west, such as many people who come from the west, by plane they pass over Al Juhfa, or known also as Rabikh. These are the Miqats. This is whether by land 
or by sea or by plane people have to make the intention and have to be at that moment in the state of ihram which is the declaration by intention but also uh, for men wearing that garb preferably white and seamless garb called ihram and that is the uh, wearing of the man as for women they wear regular hijab uh, then of course a person declares talbiyah saying labbaik allahumma labbaik if he is or she is going for umrah they say labbaik allahumma umrah if she is or he is going for hajj they of course one says labbaik allahumma hajja if he is or she is going through tamattu' Uh, they say لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً مُتَمَتِّعًا بِهَا إِلَى الْحَجْ so on and so forth these are different uh, uh, intentions for different acts uh, whether it's Hajj, whether it's Umrah, whether it's combined Hajj and Umrah such as in Hajj Qiran uh, different kinds of intentions however the acts and the actions are the same the same Ihram, the same station now there are also sunnas who, if missed they do not spoil the ihram but they are very important for a person to do uh, his or her hajj or umrah properly the way the prophet peace be upon him did it that is ghusl a person takes a shower clipping the nails and trimming for man trimming the mustache uh, shaving the hair of the armpits and the pubis the rest of the body Third, of course, wearing white uh, garment, uh, and that is actually a garb that is white, known as ihram. Number four, entering ihram after uh, praying a farida, an obligatory prayer, one of the five prayers, or praying a nafila. And then fifth, repeating uh, talbiyah by saying labbaik Allahumma labbaik uh, very often and finally of course making dua and making of course salat on the messenger peace be upon him the forbidden actions of ihram are as follows Tawaf is the circumambulation and the compassing around the Kaaba seven times. It is one of the pillars of Hajj and one of the pillars of Umrah. Uh, tawaf uh, is actually uh, the ibadah that Allah mentioned. Uh, and let them circumambulate the ancient house. Now this Tawaf is so important and it represents Hajj. But there are different tawafs. Uh, the tawaf of Umrah is only one tawaf, but for the tawaf of Hajj is the tawaf which is done uh, in, on the day of uh, Nahr, the 10th day of Dhul Hijjah after Arafat, or uh, one of those days of Tashriq, whether the 11th or the 12th or the 13th, if a person cannot do it on the 10th. But the tawaf in general is the same. It's all the categories of tawaf uh, are the same, and they are done the same way. A person makes the intention uh, after making wudu has to be in a state of tahara cleanliness whether major cleanliness or minor cleanliness enter the haram there is no tahiyatul masjid in the haram so a person just starts with tawaf after contemplating the kaaba enjoying looking at the kaaba being ready it is an emotional state and a person of course feels that uh, oh and that grandeur and that beauty of the kaaba especially for those who see it for the first time and you start from the black stone if you are going to do umrah or you have come uh, for the first time to do uh, Hajj as in Tawaf Al-Qudum especially for the one who does Hajj Ifrad or Hajj Qiran that Tawaf Qudum or you come to Umrah such as in the case of the Mutamatti' in Tamatu Hajj you should uh, uncover your shoulder uh, uh, for the first three rounds around the Kaaba you don't have to do it all throughout the Ihram uh, but just for the first uh, three rounds of the Umrah or the Tawaf of Qudum, the first Tawaf that you perform. 
Now, the, the uh, tawaf basically starts from the black stone. If a person is downstairs, could start there. Sometimes, of course, many times in Hajj, it's busy. Anywhere upstairs, just at the sign of the black stone. And a person starts there by saying, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahumma imanan bi kitabika wa tiba'an li sunnati nabiyika. Uh, and the dua is known, uh, but Bismillah, Allahu Akbar would be enough for a person to uh, start the tawaf. Uh, kissing the black stone is a sunnah, it's not fard. There is no need to fight or push and shove people. It is not uh, uh, the sunnah or the proper way of doing tawaf, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to Omar to avoid pushing and getting in the crowd, especially strong people should be very careful not to harm weaker people, older people. Unfortunately, people do push each other, but you stay away from that by saying Bismillah Allahu Akbar and be busy making dhikr, remembering Allah. And that is why Tawaf reminds you this the, the, about the whole universe and puts you in harmony with the whole universe as everything in this uh, world is making Tawaf. The planet Earth is also making a, a, an anti-clockwise circumambulation. And yourself, you are making that Tawaf, the Earth is making, uh, and the universe, everyone uh, and everything is doing that anti-clockwise, even the smallest thing uh, in the existence. And that is uh, a universal meaning that sometimes we cannot understand. Once a person is in Tawaf, he makes dhikr, read Quran, and whenever he or she reaches the Rukn al-Yamani, which is the corner before black stone, if he or she is able to touch it, that is a good thing without kissing it. Otherwise, you just keep going, saying, Rabbana, آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار and when uh, a person reaches Blackstone uh, he or she says Bismillah Allahu Akbar if possible if you can kiss it that is good if not do not worry Allah knows your intention and you are of course doing the right thing by avoiding harming others now when you complete this Tawaf uh, you are actually going to uh, Maqam Ibrahim and as you see Maqam Ibrahim is close to the Kaaba however during Tawaf especially during Hajj or Umrah Ramadan it's busy so you stay away from uh, the Tawaf uh, traffic and you go anywhere behind Maqam Ibrahim and you pray two rak'ah saying uh, uh, the uh, ayah in the Quran وَاتَّخَذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى and you pray the first rak'ah Fatiha and قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ in the second rak'ah Fatiha and قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ and you go and drink Zamzam and say the famous dua اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا والشفاء من كل داء وسقم and go back to the black stone if you can otherwise enough for you to just say Bismillah Allah Akbar as you did in the beginning and then you go to Sa'i and you start your Sa'i from Asafa. Sa'i between As Safa and Marwa has also many commemorations and the commemorations of Sa'i remind us of Hajar and her sacrifice for uh, her son Ismail, her sacrifice for Islam, her obedience to Allah and her uh, understanding of the orders of Allah and how she understood that Ibrahim did care about her and the son but it was an order and it was something God uh, knew before that is the beginning of course of another story a story of Ismail and later the story of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so Hajar was looking for the water so she had to go between a Safa and Marwa and look for water however God Almighty uh, made the water spring out from beneath uh, beneath the feet of uh, Ismail peace be upon him and she came and said Zamzam Zamzam in her language which was of course from uh, Egypt 
the old Egyptian language and uh, she was happy to see the water and that is why that well is called Zamzam. Now when we go there we read the from Surah uh, 2 chapter 2 verse 158 as the Prophet peace be upon him said Abda'u bima bada bihi Allahu Azza wa Jal God Almighty mentioned uh, as one of the earliest rituals of Hajj uh, in commemoration of Hajar uh, as being the first uh, before the building of the Kaaba, God Almighty started talking about the rituals of Hajj by mentioning as Safa and Marwa uh, mountains or hills. And uh, we read, Inna as Safa wal Marwa min sha'air Allah, faman Hajj al Bayt aw Atamara. فلا جناح عليه أن يتطوف بهما ومن تطوع خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم uh, you say that facing the Kaaba uh, with your hands and you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Wahdahu la sharika lah, lahun mulku lahu alhamd, yuhyi wa yumit, wa huwa hayu la yamut, biyadihi alkhair wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, la ilaha illa Allah, wahda, sadaqa wahda, wa nasara abda, wa azza junda, wa hazama al-ahzab wahda, la ilaha illa Allah, mukhlisina lahu al-deen, wa law kariha al-kafir. And of course, you proceed towards Marwa, you keep doing the same thing as on the Safa, on the Marwa, with the Dua, with the Dikr, with uh, seeking forgiveness. And of course, for man, when you reach that green sign, you jog, and uh, that is a Sunnah. Uh, otherwise, if a person cannot do that, it is not obligatory. So, seven times going back and forth, you will end up standing four times on Safa and four times on on Marwa. This, uh, this is how your Sa'i is complete. If you are in, on Umrah, then your Umrah is complete. The uh, pillars of Umrah are Ihram, Tawaf, and Sa'i. As for the pillars of Hajj, they are Ihram, Tawaf, Sa'i, and Arafat. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, uh, if you have uh, done Tamattu', you start a new intention saying Labbaik Allahumma Hajjah and you proceed to Mina. In the morning uh, after Fajr, you reach there if possible. You could go earlier if you want to avoid the traffic, but Whenever it's possible, you want to do the Sunnah of reaching Mina and praying Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Isha and if possible Fajr uh, in Mina and then go to Arafat. If you are in uh, Qiran, you don't have to do that because your uh, intention for Umrah and Hajj uh, is of course combined. And if you are in Ifrad, you just proceed with uh, first intention by saying also Labbaik Allahumma Hajja. Once you reach Mina, you go to your tent and you just relax and enjoy the company of the people like yourself. Uh, you are in a state of ihram. You have to observe the restrictions of ihram. Do not swear. Do not say something bad. You are in an act of worship that is obligatory, that is fard, that is one of the pillars of Islam. So Mina has its own flavor, its own mood and atmosphere. Enjoy it and spend that time in dhikr. Remember in Allah, talking about good things, trying to change, trying to think about your life and reflect. It is the moment of reflection, but also it is a preparation. It is a station to prepare for the big day, which is the day of Arafat. The humbling experience of, uh, for the first time, putting your hair on and looking around at a sea of white where everyone is equal. It no longer becomes, you know, what a person has. It, everyone is seen as one and, you know, in the eyes of Allah, that's how we're really all seen. Allah said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
Be patient as those who had strong determination. My brothers, it's about determination. The forgiveness is guaranteed for those who do Hajj and their intention is clean. One of the most amazing uh, experiences that you'll have when you come on Hajj is the day of Arafat. That, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because through, in all of our, in many of our other prayers, there are, there are du'as that you need to say and there are things that you need to do, but Arafat is freestyle. You ask, you are as close to Allah as you can be and you ask Him for anything that you want. <laughs> At Maghrib time, uh, when the sun sets, the pilgrim, the hajjis, leave to Muzdalifa. And uh, you will leave to Muzdalifa after Maghrib. And once you reach Muzdalifa, uh, you pray there. Maghrib and Isha combined, do not pray Maghrib in Arafat. You pray uh, in Jama'a in Muzdalifa. You sleep there. And those who cannot sleep for medical reasons or old age, uh, they are allowed to leave to Mina, uh, preferably after they stay until uh, uh, midnight, uh, rest a little bit, and inshallah you'll get the reward of sleeping. However, the sunnah uh, is to sleep uh, so long as the conditions allow uh, you to uh, have that chance to sleep there and pray Fajr immediately after Fajr you leave. Uh, if you want, you can pick up your pebbles at that place but it is not obligatory however it's good to uh, pick up your pebbles for at least the first day the day of Nahr and they are only uh, seven because it is only for Jamrat al aqaba if you want to pick up for other days that is also uh, permissible And then you proceed to Mina, and in Mina you throw the Jamarat, and that is the order uh, that the Prophet Sassim did. Uh, and then after Jamarat, there is of course uh, the Nahr, the sacrificial animal, uh, and then of course there is Tawaf al Ifada, and then there is the shaving of the head. However, if you mix the order, there is nothing wrong, as the Prophet Sallallahu was asked by many people on that day of Hajjat al Wada in his farewell pilgrimage, and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said If'al wala haraj No problem And there is no need to make a fuss or to worry because uh, this is a religion of flexibility and a religion that makes a sense and understands the uh, challenges people face specifically in that day millions of people are trying to do the same thing and of course uh, it is not easy to manage so once you do uh, three out of four then you can shave your head preferably however if you want to to shorten your hair for men uh, it is allowed however the reward the Prophet Sassim stressed was for shaving uh, especially for the first time uh, pilgrims for women you hold your hair and you cut actually uh, this much of your hair and you uh, finish your ihram you stay there after uh, the day of Nahar, the 10th, on the 11th and 12th and 13th. But if you have to catch a plane or you had to have to go somewhere else, you could leave on the 12th before Maghrib. After you do the stoning, and the stoning happens uh, after Zawal, after Dhuhr time, uh, all the way to the evening every day, except on the 10th, which is the first day, we do Jamarat only for the main one, the third one, the large one, Jamrat al Aqaba, and seven pebbles we throw them by saying Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar with every uh, throwing we say Allahu Akbar and we proceed for the three days you do seven for uh, Jamra Sura the small one and seven for Al Jamra Al Wusta uh, the uh, middle one and seven for the last one those are 21 pebbles that you have uh, after the first one and second one you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but there is no dua after the third you do the same thing on the, tw uh, the 12th and the 13th.
we're here to enjoy the spiritual experience that we as ambassadors of Islam are, are here to see. And we've come here to tell Shaitan that he's no longer part of our lives. We will do our very best when we go back to our worldly life. No matter how many seminars we attend and lectures and many books we read, it's all about you being interested in learning to serve God Almighty. This is really the central story of Hajj. Your own sacrifice, your own effort, your own money, your own dedication, and of course, your own expectations. Because all of you here are good people. And there is nobody who is perfect. And there is no Say, oh my people, Muhammad, your message is message of what? Of hope or message of despair? Don't feel lower than anybody else. It is truly a wonderful, wonderful experience. It has opened up our hearts and our minds, and we hope to take what we have learned here and the friendships we have made here with everyone and take it home and share it with others. And particularly, we made dua for our friends and our families to have this experience as well, and, and for ourselves as well. We went through some struggles, but Alhamdulillah, they made us into better people, and inshallah, we hope and we pray that Allah blesses us with opportunities to, to do Umrah and Hajj again and to be able to come and be a part of this wonderful collection of people. Coming here, I've realized how invaluable this experience is to us. We have not only grown closer to each other, closer to our relatives, closer to our brothers and sisters of Islam, and also acknowledging the hardships that they come from to come on Hajj. And our Prophet said, he said that Man Hajj al Bayt, Falam Yarfuf, Walam Yafsuk, Kharajam and Dhanubi Higa Yom Walid to Umm, that whoever performs the pilgrimage and he doesn't say he doesn't say anything obscene. Walam Yafsuk and Fisk is legal corruption. There's nothing that he does that is in, indecent that would take that would uh, you know committing sins or harming other people or this type of sort that what is the reward of it that he'll come out of Kharaj Amin he'll come back from that pilgrimage like the day that his mother gave birth meaning sinless I'm standing here right now in Mina just outside of Mecca and around me on top of a mountain I'm standing above a camp and just below it's breathtaking there are millions and millions of people here. Everybody coming here to do the one same thing. And it's just unbelievable. I've heard so much about Mina and so much about all that takes place in Hajj. And I'm just here experiencing it for the first time. And it's all just overwhelming. I look out here and everybody is here doing the same thing. Everybody's put aside their worldly affairs. Nobody here is thinking about their jobs back home. Nobody's thinking about what they need to do and the loans they need to pay and, and the things they've got to do. It's, it's not on our minds. We're in peace here. And we're just thinking about God. That's it. We're here to build a connection. And, and I've done that. It's, I just, I'm here speaking to my Lord, asking Him for forgiveness. And everybody here has the same intention. And as we did the tawaf and as we did the sa'i, uh, as we spent time in Mina, uh, wallahi, um, having the opportunity just to sit and, and focus on nothing but, uh, but, but Allah and uh, Rasulullah alayhi salam, no blackberries, no cell phones, no nothing. This was just a beautiful time to sit and say, um, focus entirely on, 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 on my religion. When I go back to my country, the United States of America, I'll be able to tell the people how blessed we are that we're living in houses with you know, air conditioning, that we have cars that we're able to take to our work. Where when I see people that are outside, that are walking miles and miles just to get food, when I'm able to tell people that you know, we have medicines that we can take for, for the simple cough, simple diarrhea, and other things like that we may experience when we're outside of our environment. And they came here leaving their country, leaving their family, leaving their, the place that they're comfortable with 
to come here and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once in their lifetime. One thing I've gained from going, coming on this Hajj is the realization of how much I have in my life back at home. And it's made me so thankful for everything I have and it's made me realize how much the Muslim world needs uh, the help of those who are more fortunate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the only one who can make this journey beneficial for you. Alhamdulillah, when I got here, I didn't know what to expect. But I know in my heart that I wanted to be here. And when I came here and I did my Hajj, I feel so beautiful in my heart that I cannot explain it. Most of all, one should have patience. That will really overcome everything. Uh, people think that Hajj is just coming and doing the Tawaf. It is not that. It is the whole experience that taught me is that you have to have the sabr. For a first Hajj and coming into, from the perspective of a river to Islam, the spiritual aspect was uh, of course enormous, but what I feel I gained most from it was the rebirth, a sense of entire forgiveness. In Australia, we're used to getting everything instantly, you know, it, we're used to instant drive through fast food, we're inst used to instant coffee, instant everything, and subhanAllah, in, in, in Hajj, there's just so many people from all around the world, uh, everything you have to wait for, even the smallest thing, you have to wait maybe three, four, five, sixteen hours even. I am uh, grateful to Allah that He brought me here, it's a great honour that He brought me here, and I'm very much uh, moved inside. And I feel that this is uh, once in a life, a journey of a lifetime, and I shall always remember it. And I'd like to repeat it as many times as I can afford and my health permits. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was meant to make your Hajj easy. Please pray for us as you do Hajj. May God Almighty give you Qabul acceptance, Hajj Mabrur, wa Sa'i Mashkur, wa Dham Maghfur, wa Aib Mastur. حفظنا الله وإياكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله